Hello, fans, and welcome to This Day in Baseball, where we're going to bring you a full radio broadcast of today's game. And before we do that, I just want to thank Classic Baseball Radio, and there's a link in the notes where you can uh, check out their full channel. They have many, many great radio broadcasts. And while you're listening to today's game, if you want to check out much more about the game and the players, look on the links below, and you're going to see uh, links to player pages, the date the game happened, the year it happened, and the play-by-play. Enjoy the game, and check out the links while you're watching the game, and please don't forget to hit the subscribe button so that every time new content comes out, you're going to get that uh, firsthand. And thank you again for checking out This Day in Baseball, and enjoy the game. One out, nobody on. Here's the payoff pitch coming to Reese. A fastball that's inside for ball four. Okay, he draws a walk. David Reese is on at first. And Nigel Casey Stengel is pacing in the Yankee dugout. And I would presume, if I may, that the skipper of the Yankees will not waste much time. If the Dodgers uh, start to uh, pepper Mr. Cooks. All right, Reese leads off. Scarlett holds against him. The outfield to the right. The Snyder, the Duke is in there. The pitch is swung on him. The liner on the left field. Center for Reese. Coming in is Howard. He's got it. He holds Reese at second. Throws into McDougal, a cutoff man. And the Dodgers have runners at second and first. Paper 
Jim Cruddy in the one-ball delivery. is swung on and fouled back over the top of the roof. And it's one and one. Jim Cruddy with a right hand drive to the Two runs. The lead away by the runner. A swing and a ground ball. It's close to 45. Newcomb grabbed by 
pull back down the way. Roy Campanella on deck for the Dodgers. The Yankees, too, the Dodgers nothing. We're in the last half of the second inning, two off. One strike to Perillo, swings over a close stance, and deep in the right hand batter's box. Cooks is ready. Delivers a ground ball to the second baseman, Billy Martin, in with it, and flicks to first, he's out. So in the second inning, the Dodgers bounce out, third to first, second to first, and second to first. The last the second inning, no runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on. And at the end of the second inning, the score, New York Yankees 2, and the Brooklyn Dodgers, nothing. Look sharp, feel sharp. Two strikes 
by Mantle. Martin leads off the pitch to Mantle. Swings and cuts a foul back over the top of the roof. And the count remains to Mickey. Two strikes on deck is Yogi Barra. He was the man with the home run in the first inning with power on second and two out. They put the Yankees ahead two to nothing. New York, two runs, three hits, no errors. The Dodgers, no runs, one hit, no errors. Martin again jumps off to a lead. And the two-strike pitch to Mantle is high outside a fastball, one and two. Don Gickham uh, put every ounce of his strength back to that ball. Jim Snyder moves over a few more steps in right center field, and he is deep, and Bravo is in the shadows of the scoreboard. The one two pitch. Mantle swings and strikes three. So Mickey Mantle for the second time in today's game has gone down on strikeouts. And that is the fourth strikeout for Don Newcomb. So Yogi Barra is up now with two out in the top of the third and Billy Martin on it first. much 
much about these days. Did you know that right now, more men use instant lathers than any other type of shaving cream? Yes, sir, and the lineup of instant lathers is as long as your arm. So it makes us real proud that the fastest growing one of all is Foamy, Gillette Foamy. Now, like all bomb-type creams, Foamy is easy to use, fast and wonderfully convenient. You press the nozzle and there's your lather, rich, ready to use. Unlike the others, however, Gillette Foamy has a special ingredient, K34, which destroys harmful bacteria on your face. Now, that's something extra for your money. A handy pressurized container of Foamy costs 79 cents. It should last you about three months. So, look for, ask for, Gillette Foamy Instant Lather Shaving Cream. I'm pretty sure you'll like it. In the last half of the third inning, with the Yankees taking a 4 to nothing lead, here is Roy Campanella leading off for the Brooklyn Dodgers. Johnny Cook's on the mound. The right-hander's ready. Delivers a curve that is a foul upstairs. Happy trying to back away from the pitch. Fouls it off. is ready, and there's a curveball, a ground ball to the right side. Billy Martin takes it on the short hop and pumps it over to first base and out at first. So Campanella bounces out. Billy Martin to Bill Scourin, second of first. There's one out for the Dodgers in the last of third. And Big Don Newcomb is going to come up and back for himself. No runs, no hits, no errors. 
third, and nobody left on. And Johnny Cooks continues to pitch masterful ball here in the seventh game of the World Series. At the end of three innings, the score, the Yankees four, and the Brooklyn Dodgers nothing. Yesterday's game was uh, certainly a thriller, and what game hasn't been? Juan Levine finally coming up with a big victory and deserving after the great relief work that he performed for the Dodgers in the regular season. You know, Clem has uh, never had a losing season since he joined the Dodgers in 1950. He posted his best mark in 1955 when he won 13 and lost five. Clem, uh, who's known to his intimate friends as Clement Walter Levine, was born in Lincoln, Rhode Island, August 1926. That's right-handed. He won the game of the 1955 World Series. You can put your finger right on facts like these in a jiffy with the new condensed edition of the official Encyclopedia of Baseball, a handy 320-page book that contains the cream of the big comprehensive standard authority. It's yours free with purchase of the Gillette Super Speed Razor at the regular price. Get yours. The supply is limited, and they're going fast. for the Yankees in the top of the fourth inning. He bounced out short to first his last time up. Don Houston, working out there, starts into his windup, and the pitch coming to Howard. Fastball is just outside for ball one. The big guy is a little disheartened at the moment. He's been able to dispose of the Mammals and the Scourums and the Howards, but the Barons... Thank you. 
gone to see what he can do about stopping the Yankees and holding them down while the Dodgers try to solve the offerings of the right-hander, Johnny Cooks. Messon digging out there on the mound a little bit to uh, fix the footing so that it'll be a little more to his liking. And the outfield for the Dodgers straight away. Jackie Robinson at third is backed up just a few steps off the edge of the infield grass. Messon, the right-hander, winds and delivers to McDougal. It's a strike over the outside corner. that bat right on the end. The Yankees five, the Dodgers nothing. Top of the fourth, pitch. Hold on, and a little popper back to second. Right back there, Jim Gilliam. Back on the edge of the grass, he's got it. Round number two. So McDougal cannot get by Jim Gilliam. After the second time, Gilliam has taken care of McDougal, and there's one out. The batter now for the Yankees, Andy Carey. Carey uh, threw a walk off the offerings of Don Newcomb. Looking into Roy Campanella. Starts into his windup. The pitch comes and it's lined over the top of the roof. Foul. Don uh, wears glasses. And as uh, we mentioned a few times before, he is a great example of individual courage. As a swing and a foul at the plate. serious medical treatment and surgical treatment and through his own perseverance and desire to continue in baseball. About a year sleeping on the floor and to take corrective exercises but he was determined to come back and has made it. Terry stands in there bent at the waist looking out. Two strikes, one out, nobody on. John Besson is into his windup, and the pitch comes to Andy Carey. Swings on the ground ball left side. Peely Reese to his left. Ball strikes off his glove, and Carey sweeps in the first, and he's in. It is an error. Hard to the little colonel, Peely Reese. That is only the second error for the Brooklyn Dodgers in the series. That the other error, I believe, was One Brooklyn error. And 
One man left on. And at the end of three and a half innings of play, the score, New York Yankees five. And the Brooklyn Dodgers, nothing. Well, Bauer and Billy Martin both have been uh, aggressive snappers for the Yankees. Uh, or making great throws, feeling, and they're always dangerous with that bat. Jim Gilliam just gets the ball over ahead of Hank Bauer. Bauer was looking at the umpire as he went by. Figured that he might beat that one out, but he didn't. And for the Yankees in the fourth inning, they come up with one run on one hit. There was one Brooklyn error and one man left on. And at the end of three and a half innings of play, the score, New York Yankees five. And the Brooklyn Dodgers, nothing.
down to third to first his last time up. Men in the waist with a pitch and a curve that snaps over the outside corner for a strike. Two out, last half of the fourth inning. The Dodgers have one hit, a single by Duke Snyder in the first inning. Guy Cook says walk two, they walk three. Facing of the railing in front of the box seat. The gentleman out there trying to get it. Can't quite get to it. Jay Cutler retrieves it. So it's two strikes and two out. And Hodges is still in there. Scouring at first base playing back to the runner, Duke Snyder. McDougal is uh, deep and short. Carey guarding that foul line at third. Howard deep and left. Man around in left center. Here's the pitch coming to Hodges. The fastball is just outside. Ball one. One and two now. The big five runs the Yankees have up there has uh, kind of uh, reduced some of the spirit of the ball game. Cooks again. Looks to Snyder. The pitch comes to Hodges who lines it. One hopper. Billy Martin grabs it. Goes to first with his throw to Scour and he's out. Lost it, zip and drop right in front of Billy Martin. On the short hop, he pumps it over to first. And the play goes 4-3. And in the fourth inning for the Dodgers, no runs, no hits, no errors. One man left on. And at the end of the fourth inning, the score is New York Yankees 5. The Brooklyn Dodgers, nothing. and the MP 
Steele is backed up from the left side. Martin steps out. The part of the block is called time. On deck for New York, Mickey Mantle, who has struck out twice. This will be his uh, first appearance against Don Messon. Messon's ready. The one-two pitch ground ball left side. Jackie Robinson has it and fires it across to Hodges, who has it. He's out. So Billy Martin grounds out. Jackie Robinson to Gil Hodges.
Time League Leaders section in the Best Pocket Edition of the Encyclopedia of Baseball. Now, this handy book digests the big standard authority that sells for $5.95, and it's free with purchase of the Gillette Super Speed Razor at the regular price. This valuable book contains the Major League roster, records of over 600 players and managers, all-star game results, Hall of Fame, game-by-game summary of every World Series with winning pitchers, attendance, home run hitters, diagrams of big league parts, plus a load of other information to make you a hot stove lead expert. Now the supply is dwindling. You better get yours before it's too late. Just ask for the Gillette Super Speed Razor with Gillette Blue Blade Dispenser and travel case at the regular price, $1. The book is attached and it's free. Last for the fifth inning, and to carry you on, a young man I've enjoyed very much working with, Bob Wolf. Thank you, Bob Neal. Sandy Emerald steps in now to face Johnny Cook. The right-hander delivers, and the first pitch is wide and low, and the count ball one to Emerald. But the uh, Brooklyn Dodgers certainly having been backed against the wall here as we come into the uh, last half of the last game. Here's the next pitch. It's over the outside corner for a called strike, and the count is one and one to Amaros with Perillo and Campanella to follow. Johnny Cooks with his first big league start in the World Series competition. All right-handed. Here it comes, and there's a foul off to the left. Two strikes, ball one. Johnny had a fine season pitching for the uh, New York Yankees. Back to the mound. So far this afternoon, the outfielders haven't been too busy. As a matter of fact, only one outfield put out for New York. There's one sliced out to left, and Elton Howard is waiting, and he has it. Amaros is out, so that means there have been two outfield put outs registered by the uh, New York Yankees, and Howard has them both. So far this afternoon, Brooklyn has had no outfield put-outs. But their outfielders have spent some time during the uh, course of the first half of the game looking at the ball, sailing up over the fence. Carl Perillo is grounded out. He steps up for the second time to face Johnny Cooks. And they're playing Carl now, slightly toward right. Here comes the pitch, and it drives him back from the plate for ball one. It was high and inside. Appears to be coming from the left field corner toward the right field line, sweeping across the field. There's a ground ball, which is taken by Andy Carey going to his left. Fine play for the first, and Burrow is out. Andy Carey darted to his left, made a good stop and throw, and there are two outs on the home bed. Roy Campanella is coming up. Roger Craig now starts throwing in the Dodgers bullpen as Campanella steps in. Here comes the pitch, and it gets the outside corner for strike one call. Thus far, the only hit by the Dodgers was Snyder's single to left, a clean single in the first inning. Yankees have had six hits, and they lead by a 5 nothing score. Campanella waits. It's strike one the count. Hooks delivers, and he moves Cappy back with a curveball, which didn't break far enough. Count is one and one. Johnny Cooks, 23 years old, was an 18-game winner. Lost nine for New York. Starts the wind up to count one and one. He delivers a changeup, and it floats over the outside corner for a call strike two, as Cappy watched it. That one made the crowd hum. As Cooks gave the big wind up that time and just floated up the pitch. Two strikes to the ball to Campanella. Two outs, nobody on. A curveball set on the ground out to McDougal. He takes the big hop, throws over to Scowlin, Campanella's out. The side retired. Three up and three down in the home fifth. No runs, no hits, no errors, and no left. And the score after five innings. The Yanks five on the Dodgers nothing. Here's a message we've been asked to give you in the public address. Nine out of every ten forest fires are caused by human carelessness. Last 
here is reckless vandalism, Washington area, half as large as the New England states. This shocking national waste in the United States and Canada is all the more shameful because a little common sense and care could prevent it. It takes just one fatal moment of carelessness with match or cigarette to send wildfire blazing through our resources of timber, water, and recreation that was centuries in the making. Protect these precious possessions that belong to you. Follow these simple rules. One, crush out cigarettes, cigar, and pipe ashes. Two, break matches and chew after using. Three, drown all campfires, then stir and drown again. Four, find out the law before using fire. Remember, only you can prevent forest fires. This message has been brought to you as a public service. Sixth inning. Yo McDougal, Andy Carey, and Johnny Cooks. For the New York Yankees, Don Besson on the mound. For the Brooklyn Dodgers, Yo McDougal is lined out to Gilliam and pumped up to Gilliam. And he steps in now as the New Yorkers work behind a 5 to nothing lead. Including three homers, two by Yogi Berra, each with a man on, the other by Elston Howard. The pitch is down the middle, and it's strike one call. Gil McDougal at the plate. Yankee long ball power has certainly been asserting itself so far this afternoon. Here it comes, and it's low. Gil McDougall is the only regular on both teams not to have scored a run so far in the series. Gil's been putting on some uh, sparkling uh, plays out there in the field. He steps out of the batter's box now. The wind laughs a bit of dirt up around home plate. Now, Besson's pitch is over for a tall strike in the outside corner. A fastball that really zipped in there. For two strikes and a ball to Gil McDougall. And Gill's up the batter's box. They're playing him just shaded slightly toward the left. Amaral's fairly deep out there in left field. The slider slightly to left center. Big Duke of White. That's a right hander. Starts the lineup. Comes in with a fastball. And it's low. And the count now is two and two to Gill. Leading off in the sixth ninth. And this is it. who was warming up earlier, has gone back to sit down. And Bassett goes back to the mound and picks up the route bag. Two and two to McDougal. Now the sign from Campanella. Right-hander shakes it off with his glove. Now gets the one he wants. Starts the windup. Delivers. And there goes a the line shot to left field. It's a base hit for Gil McDougal. Amaral steals the ball. And McDougal makes the turn and stays at first base. Scott, Huey Reese, now steps in with McDougal on first and nobody out. It's New York, five, Brooklyn, nothing. Carey, batting eight. There's a throw over to first base by Besson, and McDougal is back in plenty of time. Here's the pitch, and it's wide. Carey came up with a uh, fine defensive play in the uh, preceding inning. Besson on the mound. Don Newcomb started the ball game. Yielded all of the runs so far. And they throw to first base, and McDougal gets back. All of the uh, New York runs came on holders. Two by Yogi Berra, each with a man on, and one by Elston Howard. Here's the pitch, and has a foul off to the right, going up over the roof. One and one to Carey, who steps out as Campanella rubs up a new ball. After the Elston Howard homer to lead off the uh, fourth inning, Newcomb was replaced by Don Besson. 
Drew since his year with two hits, a two bag of the mantle, and this lead off single in the sixth inning to Gil McDougal. Back Kerry Wake, a stretch in the bars by Bessett, and a throw to first base. McDougal back to the bag. Gil wasn't too far off base. Kerry stands deep in the battle box again, in and waiting. Here it comes. And there's a slow grounder just by the pitcher to Reese, who takes her on the grass, throws one to first, and scooped up by Hodges for the out. Fine play by Gil Hodges, scooping up that low throw. That was a slow one, which just went to the left of the mound. And Reese had to come in on the infield grass, hurry his throw, a good, good play by the shortstop. To get Andy Carey, and the McDougal moved to second on the put off. Number one, the sacrifice comes up now with Gil McDougall on second with one out. And that's the sixth inning. Hooks, chokes up on the back. Right-hand batter looks at a call, strike one. The Yankees have five runs and seven hits. And the Dodgers, no runs and one hit. That one came back in the uh, first inning. Hooks, strike one, the count. Here's the next one, and there's one which is foul back. Strike two. Fox is choked far up on that bat. A long, thin handle. Johnny is far up, about a third of the way up on the bat. McDougal on second, and one away. The outfield is playing Cooks to hit that ball late. They're playing them around toward right and in. A curve is wide of the plate. And the count now is two strikes and the ball. Besson pounds that ball to this glove. Now looks in to get the sign. Campanella. McDougal leading off second. Stretch the pause. And here comes the pitch. A swing and a miss. And Cooks goes out on a strikeout. That makes it two away with McDougal on second base, and it brings up Hank Bauer, who led off the ball game with a single up center field. They just stole second and came in to score on Barrows Homer. Since that time, Bauer has booked it and gone out and grounded it out. Bauer and Vera lead both clubs in hits with nine apiece. So Hank steps in there in a leadoff role playing right field. McDougal on second, two away. Here it comes, and there's a pop-up to the right side, near the line. Hodge is waiting, straddles the line, and takes it just in foul territory. Behind first base. So, in the top of the sixth inning, no runs, a hit, no errors, and one left. And the score, after the middle of the sixth, New York Yankees 5, the Brooklyn Dodgers nothing. Well, we certainly got a big kick seeing uh, Casey Stengel's excitement as he planted his home run sluggers when they came back to the dugout. You know, Casey is like a father to all those boys, and they're all out for him. They take it to heart when he tells them to act like champions and look like champions. Neat, clean shade. Casey sets a good example. He shaves with a Gillette Super Speed Razor and recommends they do the same. Now, if you haven't caught up with those three Gillette Super Speed Razors, the light, regular, and heavy, it's high time you did. One has the right weight edge exposure and will weight to match your skin and beard. Quick shaves, good looking shaves, man, real refreshing shaves are positively guaranteed. A dollar is all it costs you to see. That's the regular price of a Gillette Super Speed Razor in its useful travel case with a dispenser of super keen Gillette Blue Blades. And that's not all. Today, that handy 320-page encyclopedia of baseball comes attached, and it's free. Dale Mitchell, that's the Besson, in the home six. Left-handed batter, and it's ball one. Dale was up there for the last strikeout of that perfect game, that Larson pitch. Here it comes, and it's over for a strike call. Not one and one. Delivers, and delivers low. Count has two balls and a strike. The Dodgers have 
one in the last 24 innings against Larson, Turley, and Cooks. Mitchell fouls one off to the left as he moves back from an inside pitch. The ball just glanced off his bat, and it's two and two. Roger Quay warming up in the bullpen for Brooklyn. As the Dodgers trail in the ball game by a five-up score, and this is the home six on the way. Cooks already. Here's the right hand is pitch. And there's a grounder going out to McDougal. He's up with it. First to first base, fully out. Mitchell, the first out in this home six. And we have a moment before Jim Gilliam steps in. So let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is Mutual, the radio network for all America. And this is CKLW, your World Series station in this area. 800 on your dock.
Roger Craig now takes over on the mound. To face Craig will be Martin, Mantle, and Vera. So it's quite an induction here that Craig has in the seventh inning. Craig, 25 years old, comes from Durham, North Carolina. He's a big, tall fellow, six feet four. This past season, he had 12 wins, 11 losses. All set to work now as Martin, who was one before he steps in in the seventh, inning gets on the way. Craig was the starter in the third game against Whitey Ford. And in the series, he is no wins and one loss. So Martin up there at the plate waiting, and the first pitch comes in low for a ball. to Billy Martin. Martin struck out. He's single to center. He's grounded out. Score five nothing. The Yankees are leading. Craig's pitch is low. Ball two. The count to Martin. Martin is a fellow who can really roll around that infield, and he likes to make sure. We've seen him operate now from his second base position and come over onto the third base side on those pop-ups. The ball's up in the air. Billy wants to be near it. Real hustler. Here's the pitch. He cuts and misses. It's ball two and strike one. And now in the uh, Brooks bullpen, Carl Erskine starts warming up. Martin up there in the outfield is slightly around toward left. Two balls and a strike. There's a line drive and Tomo Reese's jump going out to left center field for a hit. Strider moves over to field the ball and Martin, after making the turn, stays at first base with a second hit. Billy Martin with a leadoff single here. And the top of the seventh. And Mickey Mantle to double off the center field wall. His last time off after striking out twice prior to that steps up here for his fourth at bat. Martin is on first base. Nobody out on the top of the seventh. Score Yanks five, Brooklyn nothing. The Yankees have eight hits to the Dodgers one. Craig with a stretch to the pause. And the pitch to Mantle is wide of the plate for ball one. On deck is a fellow who's really been swinging about this game, Yogi Berra. And... Little inspection of the baseball by Gusty Vargas at the plate. He decides another one should be put in play. So Campanella is giving it a little rubbing before sending it out to Craig. It's for Newcomb, Besson, and Craig. So far in this game, the deciding game for the World Championship. Now we're ready. The pitch is a curve which breaks over at the knees. And it's now a one-on-one -one count to Mantle. He took it for a called strike. Robot has joined Erskine, warming up for the Brooks. Robinson has moved in on the infield grass. Martin on first, one-on-one -on -one the count. Mantle takes high. And the count now is two balls and strike one. When you deal with that one-two punch of Mantle and Barron's succession, Pitcher really has his work cut out for him. A wind sweeps across the mound, raising up a bit of a dust storm there, and time is called. Manuel stepped out, now he's back in. Looks out toward the mound. There's two balls and a strike. Here's the pitch. And a curve drops low and inside. And the count now of three balls and strike one to Mantle. Brillo is far back there and right. And Snyder in deep right center. And Amaros is way over in left center field. All the way back for Mantle. Mantle and Vera each have had three homers in this series. Three balls 
the strike. The pitch is wide, and Matt walks, bringing up Yogi Berra. Martin moves to second base.
took a quick peek at the encyclopedia of baseball, the uh, Grand Slammer by Scarlett. Uh, Those are six in World Series history. Others, Merrill, Mantle, Google, Rosary, Elmer Smith, and now Scarlett is in the book, too. Two balls, strike 
scrum to Perry. Now, what's back to a second? The pitch on the outside corner, and it's a strike call. And it's two and two. Robach is the fourth. Brooklyn Victor, Newton Stoddard, and Bessel, and Craig, and then Robach. And Erskine keeps warming up in the bullpen. Score nine nothing, New York. Here's the pitch. It's wide, a curveball. Terry almost went for it. He, the umpire says it's up the corner, and Terry is out. And he started the swing that time, held up on the swing. He stood there at the plate, Justin Vargas. That great play, the ball popped in on a cap that was ready. He picked it up, touched Terry, and it's a strikeout for out number two. And that brings up Johnny Cost for two outs from his seventh inning. Okay, so we'll have six World 
championships in a zip pocket. But did you know that another famous Yankee pilot, Joe McCarthy, won seven? The handiest source I know of information like this is just off the press. It's a compact, pocket-sized digest of the big five-dollar and 95-cent official encyclopedia of baseball that's yours absolutely free with purchase of the Gillette Blazer at the regular price. Here's the cream of the big book. Major League player roster, nicknames, first dates, lifetime records, how they bat and throw, diagrams of seating plans and playing areas, league leaders and batting, runs, hits, homers in 1876, World Series scores and summaries, plus series record of every player ever in the game, Hall of Fame, All-Star Game results, and a lot more. This valuable book is free when you buy the Gillette Super Speed Razor, Gillette Blue Blade Accenture and Travel Case at the regular price, one dollar. Get yours soon. They're going fast. Duke Snyder leads off. And the first pitch is strike one call. Snyder has the only hit so far of Johnny Cook, the single in the first inning. The next pitch is inside. Snyder started to go for it. Held up. Is on the 
the third walk on front. There's one out, one on. The score nine helping the New York Yankees leading in this deciding game. There's a foul going back and off to the left. And it's now strike two to Gil Hodges. This is a home seventh. All games dominated so far this afternoon by Yankee Power and superb pitching by their young right-hander, who is the youngest pitcher on the staff.
drop off to straight away center field. Snyder is waiting at half. Foul is out. Before Martin steps in, let's take this moment to pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is Mutual Radio Network for All America. Your World Series station in this area is CKLWAM and FM 800 on your dial. It's now two minutes past two.
Take an easy grip. Just meet the ball and drop it down a baseline. Thanks, Gil. Now mind telling the fans how you get those quick, refreshing shades? That's a cinch. Just take an easy grip on my Gillette razor and I'm in. A mighty savvy man, that Gil McDougal. How about you? Are you enjoying those easy, good-looking shades you get with a razor that matches your face? If not, better look over those green Gillette Super Seeds. A light, regular, and heavy. One has the precise blade edge exposure and one weight to suit your particular combination of skin and beard. A dollar buys the razor, Gillette Blue Blade Dispenser, travel case, and while they last, you get the best pocket encyclopedia baseball free. The bottom of the eighth, and Sandy Ambrose leads off. Here's the pitch, and it's strike one call. a single with a man on first and one out in the first. That's all. There's a ground ball going to the first base from Scotland. He's over to the bag and Amos is out. Amos has gone out three times on a ground out, a fly ball, and another ground out. And Cook continues to keep the Brooklyn Dodgers hitting that ball into the ground. That's in the pattern right throughout this game. Only two outfield putouts. That is Carrillo. And there goes a ball to Johnson and for a big hit. Dickie Mantle feels it. And Carrillo was on first base. And the Brooklyn Dodger fans, who had so little to cheer about, finally admit this wild roar, which has been contained now since the start of the ball game. Cooks was working on a fourth one-hitter of series history, according to our Encyclopedia of Baseball. Here's Campanella, who is 0 for 2 with a man on first and one away in the home eight. The pitch is missed. Now he went for one that time, which rolled to the outside corner. Erskine again is warming up. in two 
Zeppelin fill his game. That's selected for one player. Back in 1926 against the Cards and in 28 against the Cardinals. On each occasion, he had two successful home runs in effective innings. So Vara comes up there now on the ninth to lead off. He swings and delays.
Morris, Julius Guterres, Bill Scowlin, Johnny Cook. The Dodgers had one run and six hits in the last 27 innings. As New York Yankee pitching, as we really come to the fore. Here comes the pitch, and there's a punt that's popped up, and Yogi Berra makes the catch in foul territory. Yeah. 
Thank you. This broadcast is authorized under broadcasting rights granted by the Commissioner of Baseball solely for the entertainment of our listening audience. And any publication, rebroadcast, or the use of the descriptions and accounts of this game without the express consent of the Commissioner is prohibited. And now to wind up this World Series broadcast, let's pick up Mel Allen, some of those victorious Yankees. Okay, Mel, I'll take over.
to take out a second baseman, George Stubb, or an outfield. Well, thank you very much, KC. I know Del Webb, co-owner of the Yankees, standing behind him. Hello, congratulations to you. Well, that was a great ball game, Dave. Right? You know that Chuck Spencer really missed a great ball game, and he never struck out a man until he finally struck out Robinson in the last inning. He had uh, tremendous control, Mr. Webb. And Yogi set up by Yogi Spencer. He kept the beat that ball in the ground, which he did. It sounded like Billy Martin to take it up and throw him out. <laughs> Here's Billy Martin. Billy, uh, you were the hero of the last Yankees World Championship team. Is that right? Well, uh, 1953. That's right. A long time ago, Mel. You got the 12th hit that drove in and went you out in the ninth inning. Yes, I did, Mel. Well, what about today's game that gave you the most uh, uh, thrill outside of the winning of it? The way Johnny Cook did. He was just crazy. And all the heart in the world, Mel.
shows what a great thing. I repeated that, and I said that, say it time and time again. When a pitcher's got control of that ball, it don't mean the difference who they hit it is. When he does where he wants to, it's going to be tough to score, off, regardless of the part. You know, in the story of the World Series, the Dodgers had 42 hits in seven games, and they only had three home runs. Now, this is a club that is loaded with home run power. The Yankees, on the other hand, had 58 hits and a grand total of 12 home runs, which, incidentally, is another World Series record for home runs in one series. The thing that I was happy to see today, Joe Scarlin, who was 0 for 4 in the first ball game, and Austin Howard, who had not been in the lineup the last couple weeks of the season and made his appearance in his first World Series, came through with home runs in great style and, of course, helped to win that uh, title, that 12 home runs in one World Series. Now, Scarlin and Howard, uh, you have seen them through the entire season. Uh, in your opinion, what makes them such outstanding players, especially in that class? Well, the, first of all, they got a lot of power. They got strength. Both of them can hit a ball to any field, right field or left field, can hit over any catch. As I know the games we played them during the summer, they showed that. And uh, that's one thing about the Yankee Club. I know that they got a bench there. They can change the keys. They can change any time. If one fellow's not hitting, and he goes to another park, and he's got a, a fellow like Skarn, uh, like Brooklyn Park, I'd say he's made the order for him. He can change his lineup and put a fellow in like that. And I think he made the change today because he wanted to give Slaughter a rest because the season's over. But Angus, you know, has played uh, very few games of six games in a row during the season. But with Skarn in there, I think he figured that maybe he could hit a couple out of the park or one out of the park, which he did. So I'll say Casey pulled the right ones out of the bag. You know, Johnny Cox was absolutely brilliant today. He's the youngest pitcher on the Yankee staff. He's 22 years of age and one of the youngest pitchers ever to win a World Series game. And coming from here in the New York area, it's really something. That's his first World Series win and only his third year in organized baseball. One of your favorite players and, of course, the country's favorite players came through in great fashion today by hitting uh, home runs number one and two in the, in the game and in second and third in the series, all three off of Newcomb. And a strange thing, uh, Yogi Berra had 10 RBIs in the series and eight of those RBIs off of Newcomb. How about your man, Berra? Well, Rex, I predicted it for the series, and in fact, the last series we played with him, I said, there, there is the most dangerous hitter on the club. And he got away with something yesterday, of course, it was a percentage play when he walked battle to bring Barrow up, and he hit the, and they figured he hit one on the ground when he popped up. But you know, Barrow is a dangerous hitter. He don't have, hit for a high average, but he drives in on court and run, and he gets him in key games. I think he's one of the most valuable players. I would say he's the most valuable player on the New York Yankees. The Yankees had a lot of great stars in the series, and so did the Dodgers in every respect. I don't think that you can label anyone the GOAT of this series. Charlie, before we run down the final box score on today's game, let me ask our listeners a question. Are you one of the thousands of men and women who are about to change to a filter cigarette? Well, listen. There's a good reason to change to Viceroy today. Smoother, 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 Viceroy. Smoother than the Viceroy has. Get ready for next spring. All right, 
right, Charlie. One last reminder, fans. Remember, get your Viceroy grill soon. This has been the World Series Wrap-Up with Charlie Dresson and yours truly, Rex Clark. Brought to you by Viceroy. The cigarette with 20,000 fillers in every tip for that smooth, smooth taste. The smoothness of rich, mellow tobaccos, which make Viceroy the winner in big league smoking. Fans, it has been a great pleasure and a sincere pleasure for us to bring you the warm-up shows and the wrap-up shows before and after each World Series game. On behalf of uh, Harry Wisler and our Viceroy baseball expert, Charlie Dresson, our producer, Joe Keating, our engineer this afternoon, Harry Bryant, and our other engineers throughout these warm-up and wrap-up shows, uh, for Viceroy, it has been a great pleasure. And once again, remember, get your Viceroy's real soon. This is Mitch Rose, the Radio Network for All America. You are tuned to the Good Neighbor Station, CKLW, and you have an FM 800 on your dial. Stay tuned now for five minutes of the class news, be followed by music over the 800 spot in your dial.